talk about a crusher. Yes! Oh! Are you kidding me? And oh! Welcome back to Scored Sports Podcast. On those this podcast. Land Frank, we're now episode 166. Yes, we're 166 episodes through, and I got the special episode for you. The mock draft special, everybody. One of my favorite episodes to do the whole entire year. The full 32 pick first round NFL draft. That's the episode, everybody. 32 picks, 32 correct picks. Get ready for this elite mock draft. The fourth annual Square Sports NFL mock draft special. Let's get into it. Here we go, everybody. The Schoolyard Sports NFL 32 pick first round NFL mock draft, everybody. NFL draft is one of my favorite events of the year, and this is one of my favorite episodes of the year to do. Full 32 pick first round NFL mock draft. We got trades, we got chaos, we got a bunch of stuff. Get ready for it. Here we go. Pick number one the Chicago Bears are now on the clock. With the number one selection in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Caleb Williams, quarterback at USC. Now, in all my years of scouting on scored sports from 2020 to 2024, from 12 years old to 16 years old, Caleb Williams is the best quarterback prospect I've ever seen, ever. From Trevor Lawrence, from other guys, from Zach Wilson, from Trey Lance, from Kenny Pickett, from Bryce Young, CJ Stroud. Caleb Williams has been the best. And I've never missed a first overall draft pick, everybody. First year was Trevor Lawrence. Second year was Trayvon Walker. Third year was Bryce Young. And now we got Caleb Williams, my number one overall draft pick, the 2024 NFL Draft. He's going to bring generational talent to Chicago. It's going to be a great team. They still have number nine pick. Still got some great things coming up in this draft. They got great cast form. Ryan Poles, Matt Eberflus. Can't wait to see what they do with Caleb Williams as their QB1. That's my first pick in this draft. Chicago Bears. Go Chuck. They take Caleb Williams. Let's go get their Hall of Fame quarterback of the future. With the second overall pick, the Washington Commanders are on the clock. With that second overall pick, the Washington Commanders select Drake May, quarterback at North Carolina. Not Jaden Daniels. Not Jaden Daniels. I know everybody wants to say, it's going to be Jaden Daniels. No, it's going to be Drake May, everybody. When you watch Drake May, when you think about Drake May, past two seasons, it's been Caleb one. Drake May, too. I think they do that on Thursday night. They take Drake May with that number two overall pick. This is a good new head coaching staff. They have Dan Quinn. They have Cliff Kingsbury. Now, Jane Daniels might fit into that Cliff Kingsbury offense, but Drake May fits into it better, in my opinion. You've got a big quarterback. can play like a Justin Herbert. can play like even a Tom Brady. If you want to be accurate, he can be a Drew Brees for you. This guy is elite. He can be a playmaker for you and a franchise quarterback for years to come. They take Drake May, the second overall pick, watch the Commanders, and they get their franchise cornerstone. Number three, no trade here. The New England Patriots are on the clock. They decide to keep their pick, their first, first overall pick selection without Bill Belichick in that building this century, it seems like. Bill Belichick was there forever. Tom Brady was there forever. It's a new generation. Gerard Mayo is now the head coach, and they don't have a quarterback Who's that quarterback going to be? Is it going to be Jaden Daniels? Is it going to be Michael Penix? Is it going to be J.J. McCarthy? Could it be someone else? I've got them taking J.J. McCarthy, everybody. Worked out last time they took a Michigan quarterback, and J.J. McCarthy is that guy, everybody. Everybody likes to say, well, these guys had great careers in college. Drake May, great season, his last year of college. Caleb Williams won the Heisman. Jaden Daniels won the Heisman. What has J.J. McCarthy done? He won the championship, everybody. He did something all those guys couldn't do. Led his team to the NASP championship. Michigan was a great team. They still need a leader. Hence why Jim Harbaugh, all his years at Michigan, never made the playoff, never made the championship until this guy stepped into Ann Arbor. Patriots see that. Robert Kraft says, hey, worked out last time we picked a New England Patriots quarterback from the University of Michigan. We're going to do that again. And J.J. McCarthy is going to be our franchise guy. He's a slam dunk pick. I can say that. He's one of my favorite prospects in this draft class. My favorite player in Michigan football history. Goes number three right here to the New England Patriots. Let's go. J.J. McCarthy ends up in New England. Now number four, Arizona Cardinals are on the clock. I thought long and hard about this one. 
I said, maybe they trade the pick. Maybe they do something else with it. Maybe they even try to go with a quarterback and replace Callum Murray. They don't do any of those things. The best player in Arizona Cardinals franchise history, in my opinion, is Larry Fitzgerald. Now, in the past few years, there has not been a Larry Fitzgerald type of prospect at receiver until this year, and that guy's Marvin Harrison Jr. If you watch Marvin Harrison Jr. on film, in person, he's the best receiver I've ever watched, ever, in the college football game. His game will translate very well to NFL level. I didn't love his draft process, not doing the combine or his pro day. Maybe a little bit injuries, something in there. But Marvin Harrison Jr. is that next Larry Fitzgerald. You want to build up Kyler Murray? You want to build this team? Let's get you the best receiver in the NFL after his third year in the NFL. I think that's what Marvin Harrison Jr. can be. Give him three years under his belt. This guy's going to be an all-pro. Maybe even before that, this guy can be the best receiver in the NFL. Would it even be a stretch to say he's a Hall of Famer? I don't think so. Marvin Harrison Jr., number four to the Arizona Cardinals, everybody. Now number five, the Los Angeles Chargers are on the clock. But wait, we've got a trade, everybody. There's one quarterback, big quarterback, big player, left on the board who fell, Jane Daniels. Most people have Jane Daniels go number two. I have him slipping right here. A team that desperately needs a quarterback, Minnesota Vikings. A team that doesn't need a quarterback, Los Angeles Chargers, and I don't think they need a reach for a pick right here. I don't think they should take Brock Bowers here, Joe Alt here, Malik Neighbors here. Someone they should take right here is Jaden Daniels, trading this pick over to the Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota Vikings give up picks 11 and picks 23, and with the selection at pick number five, they get their franchise quarterback, Jaden Daniels. They team up the LSU tandem of Jaden Daniels and Justin Jefferson. Sam Donald's the starting quarterback right now, and that's great. Jaden Daniels needs a year or two of experience as a backup before he gets thrown to the NFL world. This is a quarterback's division. This is a great division. Bears just got Caleb Williams. Lions have a great quarterback in Jared Goff. Packers have Jordan Love. Now it's time for the Vikings to get somebody. Got rid of Kirk Cousins, and they get the perfect, perfect fix for him in Jane Daniels. He fell to them. Fell right in their lap. They give up a lot of draft capital. They're giving up next year's first round pick, the number 11 pick, and number 23 pick. In this year's draft class, but it's worth it to get number five and to get Jane Daniels. Great for the Chargers, great for the Vikings, and great for Jane Daniels. That rounds out for my top five right here. Vikings get Jane Daniels. We got three quarterbacks off the board and one receiver. It's been great, everybody. Now, number six, my New York football giants are on the clock. I don't think the Giants should take a quarterback right here. Unless the quarterback falls into their arms. If you get a Jaden Daniels right here, if you get a Drake May right here, if you get a J.J. McCarthy right here, that's great. But that's not going to happen. If that does happen, sure, go for it. But in this mock draft, I don't have that happening. I think you go best player available. Something Daniel Jones has never had in his career is a true wide receiver one. You want to give him a true wide receiver one? Get him leak neighbors. Slap it on right there. LSU wide receiver has the potential to be a top five receiver in this game. Compare a little bit to A.J. Brown. For five, leak neighbors goes over to my New York Giants. That's number six. Number seven, overall draft pick in this year's draft class. The Tennessee Titans are on the clock. With the number seven pick in this year's draft class, Tennessee Titans select Joe Alt, offensive lineman at Notre Dame. Another example of, okay, let's take best player available. We got a great young quarterback, Will Levis. We're going to have a new running back at some point in this season because they got rid of Derrick Henry, newest member of the Baltimore Ravens. Time to get a left tackle. Last year, they took Pierre Skaronsky. He was great for them in his rookie year. Let's get another big tackle. Fill the void that Taylor Lewan left us after retiring. Joe Alt does that job right there. Notre Dame, great at producing offensive tackles. Look at Mike McGlinchey. Look at Zach Martin. Look at a few other guys. Joe Alt can be that next guy in the NFL. Seven, Tennessee Titans take. Offensive lineman, Iron Notre Dame. Joe Alt. Number eight, the Atlanta Falcons are on the clock. And with the number eight pick... In this year's draft class, the Atlanta Falcons select Dallas Turner, edge rusher from Alabama. He's my first defense player off the board. Dallas Turner is an elite defender. After his freshman year at Bama, I said, ooh, this guy can be a first-round pick. He's a freshman? Sophomore year, pretty good year. Maybe some issues, maybe some people saying he's a dirty player. Watch this play, watch this play. Let it be. Junior year, production wasn't the greatest, but it's raw talent that you can't avoid. I think they maybe take a little bit of a reach right here. When you can get the next massive edge rusher, the next Khalil Mack, the next Max Crosby, you do it right here. And that's Dallas Turner right here for the Atlanta Falcons. Dallas Turner, 
goes over to Atlanta. I picked number eight. Gonna be great next year for Atlanta. Atlanta, new head coach, Ian Morris, defensive guy, you got a new quarterback, Kirk Cousins, and then you get Dallas Turner in there on that defense. Hopefully, can be a franchise cornerstone for you for years to come. That's number eight. Number nine, Chicago Bears are on the clock. I originally had them trading down from this pick. After I saw Caleb Williams tweet today, it said, hey, just saw Romo Dunes on my flight to Detroit. What a coincidence. That's telling me Chicago Bears should and will pick Romo Dunes on Thursday. Keenan Allen can't play forever. I don't think he will. Romo Dunes can play like Keenan Allen, good at blocking. He's a great comparison to Keenan Allen. So when Keenan Allen retires, or whatever it might be, moves on from the Chicago Bears at the end of his career, you can still have a great receiving core. Right now, you're going to have Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, and Romo Dunes as your number three wide receiver. What more can you ask from anybody from a receiving room that's a great for a rookie quarterback? That's going to be an elite offense. You're going to have Caleb. You're going to have DeAndre Swift. You're going to have Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, Romo Dunes, and Cole Komet with a decent offensive line. That's playoff worthy, everybody. Romo Dunes goes number nine over the Chicago Bears. Great potential with this pick right here. I love it. Nine. Chicago Bears get Romo Dunes. Number 10. There's a Hall of Famer, future Hall of Famer, still sitting on the board, everybody. And I've said the whole draft process. It's the legend from Napa, Brock Bowers, everybody. Bowers in New York Jets. Whew, that sounds amazing to me, everybody. New York Jets take Brock Bowers with the number 10 overall selection. Aaron Rodgers, don't know how many years he has left, but you want to get him an elite pass catcher. You want to get him a quarterback's best friend. And when it's time to move off from Aaron Rodgers, you're saying... We got a great tight end, a generational tight end, whoever is going to take over the reins. That's what Brock Bowers can be for right there. I see a great 15-year-long career. Saw his freshman year in college, sophomore year in college, junior year, injuries, but still played great. Brock Bowers goes number 10 over to the New York Jets. Love that pick right there to end out our top 10. Now at number 11, the Los Angeles Chargers are on the clock. They have this pick now after the trade down. The trade down from five to get picks 11 and 23 in this year's draft class. With the number 11 overall pick, they take Quinion Mitchell, defensive back at Toledo. Quinion Mitchell has tested amazing, had a great season, played at Toledo, mid-major, not a Power 5 program, but had a really nice season. New D-back coach, used to be at Michigan, Steve Klinkscale. This is the type of guy that Steve Klinkscale would love. This is the type of guy Jim Harbaugh will love. Jesse Minner, defense coordinator out in LA. They're going to get Quinion Mitchell right here. Quinion Mitchell goes over to the Los Angeles Chargers at pick number 11. This secondary is really bad. I can see him taking two corners in this dra- first round draft, maybe with the pick 23. At pick number 11, I can see it though. Quinian Mitchell goes number 11 over to Los Angeles Chargers. Number 12. I've got another trade for you right here. Denver Broncos were originally on the clock. I've got them trading down all the way to pick number 21 and the Miami Dolphins trade to pick number 12. Miami Dolphins, a few ways you can go here. A lot of great offense tackles on the board. A lot of great defense tackles on the board. I think they go defensive route, taking a great defense tackle. Byron Murphy the second. This guy's elite. I think he's better than Tivondre Sweat, his teammate at Texas. I think Byron Murphy, maybe the production on the stat line wasn't there. But in the NFL, this guy can be an ex. And Doc Musu, Calais Campbell, Byron Murphy at uh, Texas. Goes at pick number 12 to the Miami Dolphins. They trade up a lot to get him. Trade up from 21. Give a few more things to get this number 12 pick. But they take Byron Murphy the second with pick number 12. Broncos again, slot down number 21. With the 13th overall pick in this year's draft class. The Las Vegas Raiders are saying, well, who do we take? Can we take a quarterback right here? No, too early to take a quarterback with the 13th overall pick, especially after all the great ones are off the board. I think the Raiders are a team to watch to maybe trade up for a big quarterback. Maybe they get that number five pick instead of the Vikings in that trade. But not in this mock. With that number 13 overall pick, they just have to go best player available. They go Jarazon Newton, defense alignment out of Illinois. Had a great 2022 season, even better in 2023. Love this pick right here. Illinois, really great defense players. Dang back, Brad Bielema and Ryan Walters. Their defensive days, Ryan Walters was a great defense coordinator for Illinois. Now head coach over at Purdue. They had Devon Witherspoon, top seven pick last year. Great rookie season he had. And now Jarazon Newton goes number 13. Antonio Pierce type of guy. Love it right here. Some people like to say he's undersized. I would disagree. 13, Jerzon Newton goes to the Las Vegas Raiders. Number 14, the New Orleans Saints are on the clock. There are a bunch of great offense tackles on the board, and they need offensive line help. Derek Carr got hit a lot last year, hence why he couldn't finish out the season. They need offensive line help. 
There's Talia Zafuga on the board. There's JC Latham on the board. There's a few other guys, Troy Feyatanu on the board, Graham Barton. But I think the one they go with is Olu Fushanu right here. Now, at one point in time, Olu Fushanu was considered the best prospect in this class outside of the big three quarterbacks. He's fallen a little bit in the post-draft process, but I still think he's got a lot of great talent. Offensive lineman at Penn State, Olu Fashanu becomes that cornerstone across from Ryan Ramchek out in New Orleans. Great pick right here. New Orleans Saints take Olu Fashanu at pick number 14. Now, pick number 15, Indianapolis Colts are on the clock. Saw a lot of things right here, but they need some cornerback help. I don't think they take a running back. Obviously, Jonathan Taylor. Has his big contract there to really take a running back anyways. They have the quarterback position set down with Anthony Richardson to really take another wide receiver. Offensive lineman, they're great at the offensive line right now. Don't need help there. So I think they go with Cooper DeGene, cornerback out of Iowa. Not too big of a move for him over from Iowa to Indianapolis. Cooper DeGene got hurt a little bit last season. They can return punts to you. He made a great cornerback for you. Didn't get to go through the draft process because of his torn ACL, but still a great player. I think he's top 10, big board in this draft class, in my opinion. Cooper DeGene, defensive back out of Iowa, goes to the Indianapolis Colts, top 15. Let's go Hawkeyes, everybody. Great pick for them right there. Colts, take Cooper DeGene. Number 16 overall pick, the Seattle Seahawks are on the clock. Mike McDonald, new head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. He's licking his chops right here. He's saying, whew. I'm a defensive guy. I like defensive edge rushers. And we got Leatu Latu still on the board. Defensive lineman out of UCLA. Started his career at Washington, so he's familiar with the area. West Coast type of guy. I compare him to Max Crosby. This is a slam dunk pick right here. And they didn't have to trade up to get him. Falls right in their lap. Leatu Latu, edge rusher from UCLA. Goes over to Seattle Seahawks. Pick number 16. And we're halfway through this first round. NFL Squared Sports Mock Draft Special. Everybody, pick number 17, Jacksonville Jaguars are on the clock. I think they go DB right here, and the best DB available right now is Taron Arnold at Alabama. Taron Arnold built up by Nick Saban. Nick Saban, obviously, you call him the defensive back whisperer. Taron Arnold had a great season last year. Pick six against Auburn at the end of the game. A few great plays for him. Jacksonville gets a great piece on the outside. Cornerback Taron Arnold goes pick number 17. Number 18, Cincinnati Bengals are on the clock. A few ways you can go here. Maybe trade T. Higgins. Maybe trade a wide receiver. Maybe you get a wide receiver. Or maybe you go offensive line. And there's a great offensive lineman still left on the board. Taliese Fuaga out of Oregon State. Didn't really think he'd get past pick 13. A lot of mock drafts don't have him falling past pick 13. And mine, he does. That's how I have the cards falling. And with that 18 overall pick, Another slam dunk pick. I'll compare it to the Lea 2 Latu pick with Seattle. Slam dunk pick. Great prospect falling into their hands. Don't disrespect the Pac-12, everybody. Taliese Fuaga goes number 18 over to Cincinnati Bengals. Offense tackle out of Oregon State. That's pick number 18. Number 19, Los Angeles Rams are on the clock. They need some offensive line help. This is a great offensive line draft class, especially for offensive tackles. So let's go with our back-to-backs offensive tackle Troy Feyatanu out of Washington, West Coast kid, gets to stay on the West Coast. Let's go right here. Oregon State offensive lineman, Washington offensive lineman, back to back picks. Rams take Troy Feyatanu at pick number 19. Pick number 20. Like, shake some things up, everybody. With pick number 20, Pittsburgh Steelers traded over to the San Francisco 49ers for Brandon Ayuk. Everybody, Brandon Ayuk. Contract issues, trade issues, doesn't love being in San Francisco. Bad Super Bowl results. He gets traded from the San Francisco 49ers over the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's a great pick right here. Great trade, great pick. Compared to the A.J. Brown trade going over from the Titans to the Eagles, great win for the Eagles. It's going to be a great win for the Steelers. So now, 49ers own this number 20 overall pick. They go conservative. They take an offense tackle. Let's go three straight offense tackles. J.C. Latham. Out of Alabama. Love this pick right here. Love this offensive lineman. Did pretty well against Michigan. 20. J.C. Latham. Out of Alabama. Goes to San Francisco 49ers. Through that brand. Ayuk trade, everybody. Ayuk, no longer a member of the San Francisco 49ers in the smart draft. He's on the Pittsburgh Steelers for me, everybody. Pick number 21. This is now the Denver Broncos pick from the earlier trade where I went from 12 to 21. Broncos trade down from 12 to 21. Dolphins went from 21 to 12. Broncos, they need a center. Whoever their quarterback is going to be, they just got Zach Wilson. 
I think they'd take maybe Bo Nix in the second round, so I don't have Bo Nix going in this first round. I think Bo Nix in the second round would be a great pick for them, and they're tanking for maybe a Shadur Sanders or a Quinn Ewers next year. No big quarterback spots this year. Conservative pick in the second round. But we still got to focus on this number 21 overall pick. They need a center. Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon. Great center. We're going to go with another offensive lineman pick. Four straight offensive linemen go off the board. Jackson Powers Johnson. Great season at Oregon. Great run blocker. Can do pretty well in the passing game. I like this pick. Broncos take Jackson Powers Johnson at pick number 21. Great name too. Jackson Powers Johnson. 21 to Denver Broncos. 22, Philadelphia Eagles. On the clock. They need DB help. They get DB help right here. We got another great name. Kool-Aid McKinstry, everybody. Now, if you watch Kool-Aid McKinstry from his high school days into his college days, he was elite. Same goes with Dallas Turner. Same comparison. You see him on the field. This guy's only a freshman starting for Alabama. That's what Kool-Aid McKinstry was doing. Great in the return game. Great as a corner. Kool-Aid McKinstry. Pick number 22 over to the Philadelphia Eagles. It's going to do great things out in Philly. That's pick number 22. Pick number 23, Los Angeles Chargers are now on the clock. And this was from the trade back when they went from 5 to 11 and 23. Get both those picks. Vikings trade 11 and 23 to go up to number 5 to get Jane Daniels. I had the Chargers taking a D back and number 11 and Quinion Mitchell. And I've got them doubling up. On defensive backs, taking their Michigan guy, Jesse Minner and Jim Harbaugh, both love to coach the very cerebral, very intelligent football player, Mike Sanders still. Mike Sanders still was a receiver for the first three years of his career and adjusted in two years to be an All-American back-to-back years at the nickelback corner position. Great season last year. Smartest player, I'd say, maybe in this whole entire draft class. Jalen McMillan said, Mike Sanders still is the most annoying player to play against. He was calling out formations, calling out plays. He knew everything. A guy who's going to work hard, do their homework. A guy, Jim Harbaugh, wants to keep around him. That's Mike Sanders still. Gun number 23 to Los Angeles Chargers. They double up on defensive backs in this first round. Pick number 24. Dallas Cowboys are on the clock. Cowboys tend to go a little bit risky with their picks at times. Bozzy Smith last year, not a great pick. Tyler Smith the year before, really, really solid pick out of Tulsa. Now this year, Lane Van Rush had to retire. Lane Van Rush was their first round pick back in 2018. This is a bit of a weaker Draft cost for linebackers, but I think they go with a bit of a reach. A guy who has great upside and not too low of a floor. Peyton Wilson, linebacker in North Carolina State, won the Dick Buckus Award last year. Peyton Wilson, most tackles in America last year for North Carolina State. It's going to be a great pickup to the Dallas Cowboys. Filling that role of Liam Vander Rush. Filling that role next to Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons can maybe slot down to defensive edge. You're going to have a great defense. Peyton Wilson, cornerstone for years to come. Looking for that next Sean Lee. Looking for that next Jalen Smith. Looking for that next Leighton Vanderush. Peyton Wilson's your guy right here. Bit of a reach, but I like it. Pick 24, Peyton Wilson to the Dallas Cowboys. Pick number 25, Green Bay Packers are on the clock. Green Bay Packers back in 2019 took Darnell Savage. Darnell Savage is no longer on this Packers team, and they need to fill that safety role. No better way to get a safety than a guy from Minnesota University, Tyler Newbin. Great job in the Big Ten. Tyler Newbin... Used to the cold. Great pick right here. Brian Gutegoose afraid to be a skill player ever in the first round. They don't do it this year. They go safety. Tyler Newbin out of Minnesota. That's pick number 25. Pick number 26. And a guy I've had to fall a bunch because of his play and some off the field concerns. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Jared Verse with number 26 overall pick. If you're going to keep him in Florida, that's great. You keep him down in Tampa when he's playing in Tallahassee. It's not that bad of a switch, everybody. Jared Verse, if he's healthy, if he's got his mind right, he is one of the best edge rushers in this draft class, if not the best. Had a great college ball season in the past two years. Jared Verse, pick number 26, goes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Really helped turn around that Florida State football program. 26, Jared Verse, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Pick number 27, Arizona Cardinals are on the clock. I want to applaud the Arizona Cardinals for what they did last year. They had number three pick last year, and they said, well, Houston Texans are calling us. They want to give us their first-round pick for the next year. We probably think it's not going to be a great pick. Let's do it. Houston Texans ended up having a great year. Still first-round pick, though. With that pick number 27, Nate Wiggins goes over the Arizona Cardinals. So they grab a great receiver in round one. The first overall pick they got, number four, Martin Harrison Jr. And their second pick of round one, they grab a safety. Compared to the Garrett Wilson, Sauce Gardner draft, Jets had back in 2022. Both of them won rookie of the year. Maybe we could see that in Nate Wiggins and Marvin Harrison Jr. Nate Wiggins, D-back out of Clemson. 
goes that pick number 27 to the Arizona Cardinals. Great draft for them. That rounds out Arizona Cardinals draft for this year. Pick number 28, Buffalo Bills are on the clock. Buffalo Bills have a horrendous, horrendous receiving room, everybody. Do not have Gabe Davis anymore. Do not have Stefan Diggs anymore. Khalil Shakir is your wide receiver number one. Now they've got two great tight ends in Dalton Kincaid and Dawson Knox, but that's not going to be enough. You're going to need a great receiver, and that great receiver, that day taker right here, is Troy Franklin. Not Brian Thomas, not A.D. Mitchell, not Xavier Worthy. Troy Franklin had a great year in the Pac-12. Bo Nix, great quarterback for him. Finds great ways to get open. Finds great ways to speed in space. Buffalo's going to love that. This is a great pick right here. Joe Brady, type of guy. Troy Franklin goes at pick number 28 to the Buffalo Bills. The last receiver of this draft class. Go at pick number 28. Pick number 29. Chop Robinson goes over to the Detroit Lions. Now, this might be a bit of a reach, but I got Chop Robinson, defense lineman at Penn State. This guy could easily be top 15 if he didn't get injured last year. Got injured, came back against Michigan. Had a pretty decent game against Michigan, but Chop Robinson, what a great name. Best edge rusher of the Big Ten this year. Great job he had. 29, Detroit Lions, Dan Campbell type of guy. Tough, gritty, Big Ten, Chop Robinson, defense edge, goes to the Detroit Lions at number 29. Now, pick 30, the Baltimore Ravens are on the clock. But wait, we've got our last trade of the NFL draft there, buddy. At pick 30, Antonio Pierce, Mark Davis, Tom Telesco, a Las Vegas Raiders say, we need a franchise quarterback. Now, this guy might not be a franchise quarterback, but he can try to be that franchise quarterback. He can maybe be a bridge quarterback for us. It's a big boost, or it can be a big bust type pick. With that number 30 overall pick from the trade of the Baltimore Ravens, the Las Vegas Raiders select Michael Penix Jr., a guy who has played six years in college football, a guy who has torn his ACL how many times, I don't even know if you can count it on your fingers anymore, how many times Michael Penix Jr. has had season-ending injuries. That's not a shot at him. It's a really a testament to him, how he's been able to come back and have a Heisman-worthy type of season in 2023-2024. Michael Penix Jr. led Washington in the championship game. He might not be your franchise quarterback, but it's worth the risk, everybody. Michael Penix Jr. goes that pick 30 to the Las Vegas Raiders. Let's go. Can't wait to see Michael Penix Jr. in action this NFL season. 30 to the Las Vegas Raiders. 31. I know I said no more receivers left in this draft class, but with the 31th overall pick, San Francisco 49ers, they just traded away Brand Ayuk. When the Titans traded away A.J. Brown back in 2022, they got Traylon Burks in that draft class. I think they take a wide receiver right here. I got the San Francisco 49ers taking Brian Thomas Jr., great receiver left in the board, great target for Brock Purdy. He can maybe be third best receiver in this draft class out of the big three of Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors. Brian Thomas can fill that role at number three. LSU wide receiver goes over to San Francisco. Kyle Shanahan licking his chops right here. Great pick right here. 31. Kyle Shanahan replaces Brian Ike with Brian Thomas Jr. You don't have to pay him for another five years. That's the best part of it. 31. Brian Thomas to San Francisco 49ers to round out their first round. And with the last pick in the 2024 NFL draft class, the Kansas City Chiefs select offensive lineman. Out of Duke, Graham Barton, another offense tackle. I think we had about five offense tackles in this draft class in the first round. Great draft class for offensive tackles. And that will round out our 2024 mock draft special, everybody. Four straight years of us doing this, and we're going to get all 32 picks right when Roger Goodell calls them on Thursday night. Get ready, everybody. Great episode 166. Now, the best for last on this episode 166 question day. This week's question is who will be the biggest star of the NFL draft cost and who will be the biggest bust? Leave your thoughts on that in the comments. That's about for question day this week. That's about for our mock draft special episode 166. Follow Squared Sports on Instagram at Squared Sports. Follow Squared Sports on Twitter at Squared Sport. Follow Squared Sports on TikTok at Squared Sports. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review for the best sports content in the world. We'll be back here next week to recap the NFL draft on episode 167. Stay tuned.